Welcome back, everybody. Continuing my look at reggae DJ as we tune into the voice of the man called Percival Washrope, better known as Sir Lord Comic. Tune called Jack of My Trade from 1970, the same year that Uroy scored that hat trick by attaining the top three positions on the Jamaican charts at the same time with Wake the Town and Tell the People, Rule the Nation with Version, and Wear You to the Ball. But Uroy wasn't the first DJ, wasn't even the first to record, nor did he ever claim to be. Sir Lord Comic had recorded first. And here Sir Lord Comic is responding to Uroy's success. Jack of my trade, I'm sharper than a razor blade. Calling you Roy, calling Count my Chuki, calling King Stitch. These are the first generation of DJs, all contemporaries of you Roy, who uh, all of whom kind of nudged the door open a little bit for you Roy to come busting through with that huge chart topping success that he had for producer Duke Reed that resulted in the first reggae DJ LP version galore. Note the lyric there. We don't play version, we play chapter. He's, uh, he's calling out you, Roy, as a competitor uh, for the, uh, in the, uh, the fraternity, the close-knit fraternity of the few original DJs, uh, following on from you, Roy's success, which established reggae DJing or toasting over a pre-recorded piece of music. The success he would attain would inspire a legion of uh, more artists following in his footsteps, bringing in a plethora of different styles of delivery, different, uh, different ways of approaching the art of the DJ. But recording on uh, record was not the natural element of the DJs. It was performing live in front of an audience on stage in the, uh, in the dance halls where uh, sound systems would hold, uh, would hold dances. Uh, the sound systems had started in the late 1940s in Jamaica, kind of uh, taking over from live bands, which, uh, which you had uh, live kind of jazz bands, orchestras in, uh, in previous decades. But it, it was expensive to hire those bands. And the sound systems got started as basically a turntable with maybe a speaker on an extension cord. Uh, liquor stores would put them out in the street to kind of advertise customers to come in. Through the late 1940s, through the 1950s, the sound systems got bigger. There were more of them to the point where uh, they were competing against each other and pumping out massive volumes of, uh, of sound with uh, amplifiers, with huge speakers called Houses of Joy. Uh, pumping out an enormous amount of power. You could reportedly hear some of the more powerful ones from blocks away. And the man at the center of the sound systems, at the center of the dance, whose role was to, uh, to keep people coming, to uh, wanting to attend their dances, was the man playing the records, the selector. And one of the very best of them was a man called Winston Cooper, better known as Count Machuki, so-called because he always had a matchstick in his mouth. He was one that is credited with being the very first reggae DJ. There's a photo of him right here, rare photo. Count Machuki, Winston Cooper. Uh, he had built up a rep as a uh, one of the best selectors. They were playing rhythm and blues records from America in those days, the 1950s. He gained a rep 
for having the best selection, being able to draw a crowd, keep them having a good time, keeping them wanting to come to the next dance. I uh, would you know, announce when the next dance was going to be held on the microphone. Uh, he was working for uh, Tom the Great Sebastian, one of the big early sound systems run by Tom Wong, a Chinese Jamaican. Tom Wong's chief, chief rival was uh, Duke Reed, who had produced who would produce Uroy years later and uh, provide Uroy with the DJ's big breakthrough. Duke Reed was a tough competitor and under pressure from him, Tom Wong relocated to a safer area uptown. Count Machuki then moved on to Sir Coxon Downbeat. Sir Coxon, later founder of the Studio One label, was Duke Reed's main rival. Now the two of them would run the Coxon Downbeat sound system through the 1950s together with with um, Count Machuki as the, uh, the DJ. Eventually he would develop the uh, technique of uh, doing clicks with his mouth, rhythmic percussions, what he called peps, while the record was playing. Uh, sometimes the guy actually queuing up the records would be a, a different role called the selector. Eventually the two roles would grow separate and the guy performing over the records would be called the DJ. Uh, now when these reggae sound system culture transplanted itself to America, there would be a bit of a role reversal. The DJ would be the guy dealing with the records and the guy talking over them would be called the MC or master of ceremonies. But in Jamaica, he's called a DJ and Count Machuki was the first. One day he was walking by a record shop. In the window, there was a magazine from America called Jive, which compiled all the, the then hip, uh, black American expressions of the day. He'd also been tuning in to some of the radio stations, some of the R&B radio jocks and the, uh, the way they would use language, the expressions they would throw out over the airwaves. And encouraged by Cox and Dodd, he started doing this live in the dance over the records. He was, uh, Machuki was ambitious. He wasn't just content to, uh, to have the best selection of records. He wanted to ensure his dominance in the dance hall. That coupled with the, the already innate competitive, competitiveness of the sound systems would, uh, would also provide some of the core elements that you see later on in American hip hop. As uh, Machuki would, uh, would throw in little bragging boasts about his, uh, his uh, standing in the dance, about his supremacy. So you see that kind of uh, boasting, the braggadocio, already the competitiveness of trying to outdo each other, already right there from the foundation. Early on, Machuki brought on an apprentice, a young man named Winston Sparks, who was, uh, had a facial deformity. Uh, he would, uh, Winston, Count Machuki was impressed by his dancing to the rhythm and blues records he was playing and brought him on as an apprentice, also on Cox and Downbeat system. And King Stitt, as he would be known, sometimes pronounced Stitch. Here he is here. He would bill himself as the ugly one in uh, reference to the Sergio, Le Sergio Leone Western, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the Lee Van Cliff character. He would turn his, uh, his facial deformity into a selling feature. Uh, that's one of the facets of reggae DJing. Maybe these guys couldn't have cut it as a singer, but uh, in the, the more level playing field of the dance halls, they could make a name for themselves if they had the charisma the flash and the flare to attract a uh, to attract an audience, and these guys did. You had to be uh, you had to have style. You had to be able to perform on a microphone. You had to draw be able to draw a crowd. These guys were flamboyant. Uh, they were celebrities. They drew the audiences, and uh, they were the very original DJs. Sir Lord Comic Percival Washrope. He would be another one that would get started. Count Machuki and his style of doing these uh, these vocals over the records he would play would catch on. More and more would inspire him, be inspired by him, sorry. Uroy was one of them, directly inspired by Count Machuki, the very first DJ. Uh, comic, King Stitt, and, and uh, Count Machuki would all uh, make various records through the 1960s as uh, DJing started to crop up on record. Uh, more of a novelty in the early days, but certainly going back to the ska days, mid-60s ska days, Sir Lord Comic 
recorded what some consider the very first true DJ record called Skying West, also one called The Great Wooga Wooga, kind of funny, funny uh, titles, and they all had these catchy names, of course, uh, flamboyant names. Sir Lord Comic, he loved to, uh, to dress up, have fancy clothes, uh, he rode a motorcycle around town, delivering records to shops, uh, got his start on sound systems like King Edwards, uh, again, they all have these fanciful names, the sound system owners. Uh, also worked for uh, Sir Lloyd, Lloyd the Matador sound system, which was a powerful uh, system, which uh, was known for its uh, innovations in the amps it used, pumping out an uh, unrivaled amount of power. The early DJs, as I said, they didn't get a chance to record LPs, not until that groundbreaking version galore LP of Uroy's. Again, miscredited as Iroy here. Version galore, 1970, collecting his initial run of singles for Duke Reed. But Count Machuki did record for uh, Studio One primarily, Cox and Dodd's label, his the uh, Cox and Downbeat sound system, his old employer. Uh, more Scorcha appears on Studio One DJs. Apparently that is a miscredit. It's actually the vocal by another early DJ, Carrie Johnson, also sometimes called Carrie Wildman Johnson, who recorded a number of sides for Studio One. But Count Machuki did certainly record a number for him. Carrie Johnson is also on Studio One Collector's Edition. Correction Train, that's actually a little bit later song, early 1970s. King Stitt, or Stitch himself, would record, uh, before you, Roy, he would probably be the most prolific recorder. King Stitch would record for early reggae producer Clancy Eccles, who was a, uh, a former tailor turned singer turned music producer. He was also uh, heavily involved in uh, political activism, but recorded a uh, highly regarded body of reggae, early reggae, late 1960s, early 1970s, and one of his biggest hits was with King Stitch, the classic Fire Corner, which appears on Tighten Up Volume 2 for Trojan Records in the UK. Uh, King Stitch would also, uh, would eventually go back to Cox and Dodd and record for Studio One. Uh, there would also be earlier different kinds of DJs. Uh, again, going back to the ska days, there would be uh, different kinds of uh, vocal peps, percussive elements, vocal percussion elements creeping into the music, even on the Scatolites, Guns of Navarone, uh, former Mento singer, Count Sticky, adds some kind of uh, percussion effects with his mouth. These are precursors of the DJs. Uh, in the late 1960s, singer Dave Barker started a sideline of doing kind of James Brown, soul-type soul type grunts and shouts over uh, over the music, scoring a hit for Duke Reed with a song called Lockjaw, which can be heard on the Treasure Isle story. Uh, where is it? Lockjaw, Dave Barker, funky reggae on here. Lockjaw, Dave Barker. Also got some Uroy, also got Uroy, some other early DJs, on. Sir Lord Comic on here as well, also recorded for Duke Reed. So basically, you have a handful of early DJs starting the style. You have King Stitt, Count Machuki, King, uh, King Sporty was another early one, recorded before Uroy. King Stitt, Kerry Wildman Johnson. These are the early guys who established the, uh, the craft of DJing on the microphone uh, recorded maybe a handful of singles. Uh, hard to track down their music nowadays. Better heard on compilations, uh, of which there are many. Uh, Trojan many, has many titles, which are worth a look to see if there's any early DJ sides on them. But Uroy was the first to record an LP, and he pioneered uh, more riding the rhythm rather than just shouting over top of it some kind of uh, nonsense lyrics or uh, catchy jive expressions. Uroy brought in the technique of weaving his vocals in and among some of the, the original 
vocals on the record if they were still uh, still present, taking advantage of the development of versioning, which had uh, developed on from some of uh, studio engineer and producer Linford Anderson, aka Andy Capps, innovations with Papa Top and Herb's Man Shuffle in the late 1960s, Herb's Man Shuffle featuring King Stitt. Also, of course, Uroy working very closely with King Tubby as dub was developed, as these tracks with the vocals removed or partially removed, which gave the DJs, like himself, uh, more space to stretch out and do more with his lyrics, and it would eventually revolt, result in the DJ sides being more like actual songs rather than just a guy shouting over records. Uh, the success of you, Roy, would lead, as I said, to uh, a bunch of responses as many more clamored for a, uh, a shot at the brass ring at the success that he had attained. I'll tackle that starting in the next chapter. For now, I am going to leave you with the man called King Stitch, tune for Clancy Eccles called King of Kings, just like that Sir Lord comic tune in the intro. He is calling out Uroy, his contemporary, even though King Stitt had recorded first, Uroy hit the brass ring. Come in, Stitch. I'm the king of kings, I rule kingdoms. Keep on coming in and swing. This is King Stitch thing. This is King Stitch things thing. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Cheers.